I want to welcome everyone and thank you for being here at the White House for this meeting of the Worker Organizing Task Force. Uh, it's an exciting day here. Uh, it's bittersweet for me because this is um, my last official meeting uh, as the Secretary of Labor and, and uh, I'm, I, I, it couldn't be ended on a better, more fitting note and I'm so grateful. Uh, as a union member, uh, I've been proud to serve in this administration uh, in the most pro-worker, pro-union administration in, in my lifetime and I think in a lot of people's lifetime. Um, and I'm grateful uh, to President Biden, and, uh, and I'm grateful to Vice President Harris. Um, I've had the chance uh, to work very closely with the Vice President over the last two years, um, and, and on this particular issue that we're going to talk about today, um, it hit me, we were at a trip in Pittsburgh, and we had a meeting um, backstage before the Vice President went on stage, and I wasn't quite sure exactly how much the Vice President was going to be engaged in this issue. And I knew she was going to be engaged, obviously she was the chair of the task force, but the questions and the involvement and, and, and the, the policy conversation we had that day made me realize that we have a Vice President as well who truly deeply, deeply cares about workers in the United States of America uh, and companies in the United States of America. And, and, and from that point to this point, it's been a, a great honor um, to work with you, Madam Vice President. It's all in this area now because I don't want to start losing it here. Um, <laughs> I want to thank the companies at the table um, for the work you do and companies across America that aren't here at the table for the great work you do. I want to thank the unions that are here today uh, for taking their time, your time, to share your stories. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank uh, you for, for, for taking a positive, constructive approach to collective bargaining and labor relations, both the unions and the companies at the table. Uh, it shows when, when labor management truly works together. Um, you can accomplish amazing things. And that doesn't mean there's not gonna be disputes and little battles here and there, but it really is about, about labor management relationships and what that means. And when that happens, uh, not just the, the board of directors makes that okay, and the union leadership makes okay, the workers make out better than anyone. So I wanna thank you for that. Uh, quite frankly, I wish there were more companies uh, like you at this table in this country that, that we could understand that the importance of good labor management relationships uh, and, and moving forward. Um, the bottom line here in the conversation that we're going to have today, one of the bottom lines, is collective bargaining is good. Uh, collective bargaining can be a tool to strengthen companies. I've seen it over and over and over again uh, when, when, when the relationship is strong. It makes workers more productive, it makes workers more appreciative, and it makes workers connected to your company as a family. And that's something that's really important. Uh, this is Women's History Month and Equal Pay Day is next week. So it's also worth pointing out that collective bargaining helps narrow the wage gap in our country. Everybody in the same classification gets paid the same wages regardless of their gender. Uh, and we've been talking for a long time in this country about wage disparities with women and men doing the same exact job. We've, we've had passed laws on it in legislatures all across the country. I think I personally voted on about seven, seven of them as a rep. Uh, we don't need legislation to say a woman gets paid the same as a man for doing the same job. You don't need legislation for that. And collective bargaining does prove that. Uh, and that's something to celebrate. The task force has spent almost two years working with agencies in the federal government. Uh, this work is having an impact. Agencies working uh, on more than 100 initiatives right now to support worker organizing and collective bargaining in the private and federal sectors. Uh, our report is being released uh, soon. We'll give an update on that work, including a lot of work that we're having at, have, is happening at the Department of Labor. Uh, Vice President and Vice President Harris, um, your, your, your leadership has been critical to this, to this movement. Um, you've brought us together and pushed us to have an impact. Uh, you've had the opportunity to be champion for workers all across the United States of America. Um, it's been an honor to be a partner in this, to work beside you. It's been a pleasure to travel with you um, across the country. Come on your shoe, Marty Walsh. You're not getting rid of me because you can go play hockey. Don't you worry about it. Thank you for all you've done. I said this, I'll end with this, this is completely off script. Um, I said this to um, the Boston Globe, I think it was the Boston Globe, somebody did a story the other day, and they asked me about um, my relationships in Washington, D.C., and, and I've known President Biden since 1997. Um, I've known the Vice President briefly uh, since 2018, a meeting, 2019 a meeting, and then when I became the Secretary of Labor, and I didn't realize, uh, leaving here, the relationship, the friendship that we have. I want to thank you for what you do every day. In particular, I want to thank you for staying up for workers. I'd like to introduce the Vice President of the United States of America. Oh, thank you, Secretary Marty. Marty Walsh. <laughs> um, I just, I was a little late coming over because the President and I had our, our 
regular lunch today. And we talked about many things and we talked about you. Um, Marty Walsh and those of us who have worked with him and have the blessing of had that time with him know he is a genuine true fighter for working people in America. And he not only cares, he is extremely effective in fighting for working people in America. And through the many stages of your career and your work on behalf of working people and families, you have shown time and again how leadership should think of the dignity of work and therefore be committed to the dignity of workers. And I have seen it firsthand in the work that we have done, as you have said, through this task force. From day one, our president said, we're gonna create a structure around this administration in terms of going deep into the issues. And we're gonna start first with ourselves. We're gonna look in the mirror as the administration that is over this federal government and look at the condition and the well-being of federal workers. And Marty Walsh, front and center, took this by the reins and did the elbow grease work of ensuring that we would bring our cabinet together, that we would bring agencies together, that we would get on the ground and make sure that we were being relevant on a daily basis to the people who work for the largest employer in the country, the federal government. And as a result of Marty's work, we have seen, I've got to some of the numbers, the Department of Labor is on track to meet the goal of one million new apprenticeships by 2025. We have recovered over $520 million in back wages. It's a big deal. We have protected pensions for millions of workers and retirees. And this is just, I could go on and on about what you have done and who you are. And so we are so fortunate um, to have had a Secretary of Labor in you. And as I've said to you many times, people around our country who may not know your name and who you may never meet are forever benefited because of your service. So I want to just ask everybody to applaud our Secretary of Labor. The subject of the meeting today, as Secretary Walsh has said, this task force has been working for two years um, on a number of issues that have been about reinforcing the importance of protecting workers' ability to engage in collective bargaining, what we um, must do to make sure that people are well informed of their rights and also their access and, um, and, and their invitation to be a member of the union. We have been doing the work of informing the federal workforce, but by extension, their family members and the public in general about the benefits of uh, union membership. And as the Secretary has said, there are many, and we know that. There is the work that is about being a part of a union, that is about having an advocate for wages, for benefits, for making sure that the workplace is safe. But there is also the community that is so naturally and almost uniquely formed in the context of union membership that allows a worker to understand that they are not alone and that there are that they have a family of colleagues who will stand with them in terms of their collective goals that is not only about the quality of their work and what they hope to achieve understanding the dignity of their work but what they're able to achieve on behalf of their family and so today this meeting is an extension of all of the work that we have done thus far and as the Secretary has said, in, in particular, to highlight the role of employers. And we were very intentional about wanting to uplift the examples of employers who have embraced the importance of union labor and who have done the work then of facilitating organizing, but who also can speak to the business model that benefits from union labor. As the Secretary has said, increased productivity, increased morale, and you know, we call it esprit de corps, the, the spirit of the workforce, 
um, results, as we have seen over and over again from this kind of approach. Some of the numbers I have is that, for example, in union manufacturing facilities, they're up to 10% more productive than those that are not. Uh, when you look at union workplaces, you see lower turnover than other workplaces, and states with the highest union density have the lowest turnover rates. There's empirical evidence of all these points that we know anecdotally and just based on our own experiences. Union workplaces are safer. 34% fewer workplace safety violations take place in union workplaces. So the benefits are there in terms of the business reason to accommodate, facilitate, and support this kind of approach to workers and again, the dignity of their work. And I want to thank all of you who are here for spotlighting the importance of this. For example, you know, Ford, um, so the partnership between UAW and Ford has, um, is the partnership that is an example of one of the oldest apprenticeship programs that exists anywhere. And what they do in terms of facilitating the training, the upskilling of the workforce, and how that results then, of course, in greater productivity, but also enhancing then the work that is being done, especially as we move into new economies, such as a clean energy economy. I'm talking all over the world about this. I was just in Munich a couple weeks ago talking about clean energy economy. We're opening up a whole new economy, bringing new workers into it, which is going to allow for the, America, for the United States of America to be more competitive on the global stage, but also means what we need to do to, to partner up with IBEW and UAW to make sure that we build the skills that are necessary to enter this new economy in a way that we are competitive and strong. So I'm so glad that everyone is here today to talk about this. Um, but I do believe that the work that is happening around this table and by extension around our country is not only for the benefit of individuals and their families and their communities, but strengthens us as a nation, strengthens our economy, and puts us on track to continue to be able to compete and be a role model around the globe. So with that, I thank everyone for being here, and why don't we get started? Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.